Do you have videos in Classic Stream that need to be moved to New Stream? There are two ways that you can do this. The first is to have a global admin move the videos using the Stream Migration Tool if your organization has access to it. The other way is to manually move the videos. Now I'm going to show you how to manually move videos. Now keep in mind I am not an admin and I am definitely not your admin, so please check with your organization before you do this to make sure whether or not they have a migration strategy. With that important disclaimer out of the way, let's take a look at the process. When you log into office.com and click on the stream icon, one of two things may happen. If your company has already made new stream the default, you will see a page that looks like what I am showing on screen. To find your classic stream videos, go to the link on the right hand side of the screen that says to visit classic stream, click here. And now we are on the Classic Stream page. If your company hasn't made New Stream the default, then you came directly to Classic Stream. As the owner of some videos, I can click on My Content and select videos from the menu. The first thing that you will do is identify the videos that need to be moved from Classic to New Stream. In this fake developer environment, I only have a few and have decided that only two of them need to be moved. For each video, you will click on Update Video Details, the pencil icon. Here is where you can go to grab a lot of the information you will need. Above the Options pane on the right, you will see a link to download the video, which will generate an MP4 file. In the Options pane next to Captions, click Download File to get a copy of the transcript. New Stream will generate a transcript as well, but sometimes the transcripts have errors. If you've already corrected those errors in Classic Stream, save yourself some time and just grab this transcript. From the details box on the left, copy the name of the video and the video description, including any chapter markers you may have used. You will not be able to get a copy of any custom thumbnails if you use them, so those will have to be recreated and uploaded to New Stream. Otherwise, Stream will pick a frame from the video as the thumbnail if you prefer. The MP4 file is in my downloads folder, so now I can go to SharePoint, OneDrive, or Teams and upload the file. Your business process will determine where you should keep your videos. In this example, I will upload them to SharePoint because everyone in the organization should have access to training videos. I suggest as a tip that you create a video folder in the document library so that they are easier to find and manage. I'm going to select the video folder and then you can upload your video in one of two ways. You can use the upload option that is right next to the new button at the top of the screen or you can drag and drop the file from your computer into the folder. It may take a while for the video to upload depending on the size of the file. When it is ready, you need to click on the title of the video like you're going to play it to see the video settings. A lot of people think that they should go to the details from the more options menu, but let me save you some frustration here and tell you open the file. In the upper right hand corner, you will see a few options and the top one is video settings. When I click on that, a pane is going to pop out from the right side of the screen to show me all of the options that are available. The top option is thumbnail and by default, Stream is going to pick a frame of the video and make that the thumbnail. But you can open this section and upload a custom thumbnail if you want. The next option is about video, which is turned on by default. This is where you will put the title and the description. Because it is on, you will see a play button icon in the right navigation menu. Next is transcript. You can generate a new transcript if you want, or you can upload the VTT file that we downloaded from Classic Stream. Then you have chapters. You no longer need to put the chapters in the description box. You can turn this option on. Another menu item will be added to the right hand navigation rail which is represented by these three lines. Comments are going to be turned on by default, but keep in mind that they are not coming over from Classic Stream, so this is all new comments moving forward. Basic analytics are also turned on. And then noise suppression is turned off. So let's copy over all the information we grab from Classic Stream. 
Now, because About Video is on, I'm going to go to the play button in the right hand navigation menu. And here you will see the video title is coming from the MP4 file. If you want the title to be different, simply update this field. In this example, I will copy and paste the information that I grabbed from Classic Stream. I will also copy and paste the description from Classic Stream. It has the chapter markers, but we don't need them in this box because chapters are not managed the same way in New Stream. After you have updated the video title and the description, all you need to do is click Save to accept the changes. Now let's put the chapters in their new home for Stream on SharePoint. When you open the Chapters pane, click on New Chapter. This will add a box to the pane where you can give the chapter a title. The default time marker will be tied to where the playhead is on the Seek bar. You can change this by typing the time marker you want. This is why I advised you to copy the markers from Classic Stream so that it will be faster for you. If you did not grab the time markers, you can simply drag the playhead across the seek bar until you find the spot where you want to drop the time marker. You can repeat the steps as necessary to create as many chapters as you need for your video. And then when you're done, just click the check mark to save each one of them. The thing that I find cool about this is that this is the same pane the viewers will see, and it will be much easier for people to find the part of the video that they want or need to watch. Now let's go back to the video settings and open the transcripts and captions. I have the VTT file from Classic Stream, so all I need to do is click on the Upload button. If you don't have one for some reason, you can just click on Generate. Now once I click on Upload, a floating dialog box appears. The default is English, which is correct for my video, so I will select the file and grab the VTT from my Downloads folder. When the transcript is done, there will be a transcript button in the right navigation menu. Viewers will be able to read the transcript from that pane while watching the video. As a tip, when you generate a transcript, look it over to make sure that it is accurate. Microsoft does a decent job, but sometimes I find errors or things that are not appropriate, especially with industry specific jargon or acronyms. True story, once it called me a curse word when it did not understand my acronym. Edit the transcript from this pane or download it, whichever you prefer. Back in the video settings, we will add a thumbnail or choose a frame from the video. The first option is upload a thumbnail. Now, I just grabbed one from my hard drive so that you can see what it looks like. This doesn't match this particular video, so to get rid of it, all I need to do is click on the X to cancel my choice. If I want to accept it, all I need to do is click done. As a reminder, Stream picked a random frame from the video as the thumbnail, but if you want to choose another one, select Edit Thumbnail. The box tells you to move the seek bar to choose a thumbnail from the video. At the bottom of the video, I will use the playhead to scrub through the footage until I find a frame that makes sense to me. As I usually say, there is no wrong or right, just whatever fits your business process. I like this one that has the call out box to add a bit of context to what the viewer can expect. Now I will go back to the video settings pane on the right and click select this frame. Okay, so now we've walked through manually moving a video from classic to new stream and updated as much information as we could. Don't forget to get the new stream link and update your documents, SharePoint pages, etc. Because once Classic Stream is gone, people will need to know how to find this new video.